Prime Charles that your dad's a famous painter. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I was just wondering what kind of effect, I guess, that, that has on, like, growing up in that sort of milieu and what sort of, like, maybe even confidence that gives you as a, someone approaching uh, an artistic pursuit as opposed to not having that sort of influence in your life? Right. Well, uh, yeah, that, that question has a lot of answers, but I, one yeah. of them is that, um, yeah, that my father's certainly very, um, in general, very encouraging about pursuing an artistic career. If I decided I wanted to be a lawyer, it probably would have been a problem. It's kind of the inversion of, you know, yeah. what you usually, kid usually faces, like, if you're not, you better be a doctor or a lawyer, I'm kind of making a joke, but uh, yeah, he would have been like, oh, what have I done, you know? <laughs> Fred Timberkus, um, I think, I mean, many years ago, described the the league in that way, or maybe he was talking about the hub. That it's that I, I can't paraphrase him exactly, but it's it was something along the lines that um, that the music's like a conversation, and in a conversation, you never know what the the, the next person to speak is going to say, and you don't know what you're going to say in response to what they say. We were always thinking about that as, a, you know, you want to like over determine, you don't want to over pattern the coordinations so that they just become rigid or, um, you know, uh, yes, unsurprising or yeah, uninteresting, but you don't want it just to always be sort of undirected, chaotic mm -hmm. texture either. It's like you want it somewhere in between in a kind of surprising way. Yeah. So that, that was always kind of what we were aiming for. Maybe that's what everybody aims for in music is this kind of surprise, I mean, surprise and kind of um, uh, sudden moments of, of um, beautiful music coordination sort of come out of nowhere. Um, that's always kind of fresh or has a certain freshness that's always there. Right. Describe would be certainly something I aim for in my in my solo music. The same thing, mm -hmm. kind of wanting to be surprised, but also to have a focus and a definition to the whole thing, and not. Um, I mean, it's hard to have when I say chaotic or undirected. It's it's hard to have that. It's hard to do that. I mean, you know, anyway. I mean, that's a whole other problem. Is like, well, is that really a problem? You know, you can work on a. If you randomize everything, it'll just start sounding the same because it'll have the same. Dynamics. You want some kind of clumping or, or variation in the coordination between things, but um, but you want that you want that coordination to sort of arise in a kind of fresh way. At least at least in the way I try to design pieces. I'm very attracted to these sort of more basic synthesis techniques that I had learned earlier and got fond of, and so even now, I I kind of use a lot of techniques like that mm -hmm. as opposed to to the more sophisticated ones that people feel are generally more timbrely, sophisticated or rich. You know, you're juxtaposing two elements or three elements where yeah. you have like a field recording along yeah. with a, a synthesis background. That's right. Or layering of different field recording right. sort of thing. Yeah, there, there's, there's a number of pieces like that. And, and there are, the, you know, like the audio wave piece and the next and the next tone please piece, on the other hand, do, are, are just more right. or less single techniques. But, uh, but they're not, they're not, yeah, I still think of them as different. They're not, um, they're, they're fairly basic. But each of those pieces uses a fairly basic single technique. But tries to, um, you know, use it in a way that's develop develops some kind of interesting um, qualities. Right. Anyway, yeah, interesting discussion. Yeah. People's choices that way. What right. What's I, in driving here? I was thinking. What, what's also so curious though is that um, what I'm referring to is the timbral limitations of those early eight bit machines. I mean, we people like me and other people in the league 
made, used those sounds, you know, sort of raw 8-bit sounds, and really got into them. And, um, you know, other composers at that time wouldn't have, wouldn't even have touched that. They just thought they were crude. And, um, you know, they were crude, I mean, in a certain way. So, but uh, it's just they didn't want to deal with that set of possibilities, whereas we were kind of just, you know, <laughs> pull out all the stuff, just use what you have and, like, crank it up, you know? Right, right. <laughs>